me? Yes. Welcome everyone. Uh, this event is being live captioned by White Coat Captioning. To view the captions during the event, click on the closed captions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Then click on the show subtitles option to view the captions on your screen. You may also view a full page text of the captions by clicking on the link that is going to be posted in the chat box below. This will open the captions in a separate browser for you to view. The Vermont Arts Council recognizes that we live and gather here in Endakina, the traditional and unsurrendered homeland of the Abenaki people, one of five Wabanaki nations who have had a continual presence here since time immemorial. In the Abenaki language, Waban is the white flickering light in the sky and Aki is the word for land or the earth. The Wabanaki people are the people of the Dawnland. Please join us in acknowledging their history and ancestors, their enduring presence, and their future generations that will live and gather here in Indakina. Now I'm going to turn it over to Chantilly Gander. Thank you, Desmond. Yeah. So I want to start by thanking everyone for sharing this space with us. I am started as an extension of the Vermont Arts Council's commitment to expanding access to the arts, to culture, and to creativity throughout the state. And it started through a newsletter series called I Am a Vermont Artist that launched in January 2019. This series features short Q&A style conversations with artists around the state. And since that launch, and since uh, the first debut of I Am exhibition that featured many artists around the state in late 2019, that series has grown to over 30 artists. And now you will get a chance to see and speak with some of those artists and many more that we've added that will take place on the third Thursday of each month alongside a gallery that we have showing all the amazing highlights from some of these artists. The artists will present themselves in their work for the first half hour, and then we'll have an open space for questions and conversation. At that time, the audience will be free to ask questions. And we also encourage all the artists to ask questions of each other and treat this as an open dialogue. An important note, we have a total of 18 artists in the gallery. So there are more artists to see in addition to all the lovely creatives that you see here tonight. And I will be sharing that link during the Q&A session and towards the end as we wrap things up. Few housekeeping items, please keep your mic on mute unless you are one, the one speaking, if you're one of the featured artists. Please keep the chatting in the chat room to a minimum so we allow all of our attention and focus on the artists. During the Q&A session, we encourage the use of the chat for posting questions. For viewing, just as a reminder, in the upper right-hand corner, you can click the speaker view so that you can see who is speaking on your end. Our gratitude and acknowledgement to all of the artists who put in the time and the energy to sharing their work with us and with all of you. I will now hand it over to the artists and a quick reminder to all of the lovely artists. You'll know when you're up, when you see your name and your uh, photo on a headshot, on a, on a slide. And as we will not be introducing each artist. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the lovely artists. Hi, I'm Ellen, and this is Ouroboros, surviving the loss of Lonnie McAdoo. This, this, Grief, like a dragon devouring its own tail. All razored teeth, raw diamond bones, flesh and scales. Breath steams blood, nostrils wet with spray. Half hunter, 
all, all pray. Each bite howls with pain. Poor, poor, desperate dragon, consumed by the hopeless hunger to be whole again. This battered bulk is a balm, better the delicious sin of scorching skin than to relive this loss on and on. This, this, Sorrow, melting marrow, leaving hallowed bones hollowed out, cracking, beating heart pressed to bellows snout, breaking. This, this, melding of endings and beginnings, the forged fusion of the future to the past, the world before and the world after. That perfect point of endless possibilities, vast, the expansion of the senses, of thought, of emotion, an agonizing tear, finger painted with laughter, this, this. Who knew death would demand so much living? Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Shawnee, and I'm a Burlington-based drag performer, but I live in the Northeast Kingdom, which is where I was born and raised. Um, I studied musical theater and dance in New York City, and eventually I returned home to Vermont to go back to school and to make art and to live in a place where I could justify having uh, a million dogs, at, at least. Um, as a live performer, this moment has had an enormous impact on my work, um, but I am a Black, queer, drag performer from Northern Vermont, and I'm scrappy, and I'm resilient, and I'm certainly no stranger to making it work. Uh, I've performed for five people, I've performed for 500 people, I've performed for no people. And all of those performances, I can honestly say, have felt equally rewarding to me because I, I get to do what I love in a place that I love. And I feel very fortunate um, to be able to say that in the first place. Uh, this pandemic, though, has taught me quite a few things. Um, it taught me that I shouldn't uh, measure my success by the number of folks who get to see me perform live. All of a sudden there were no more live performances. I wasn't ready to stop performing. That didn't feel like an option for me, but this community, we are creatives and, and we did just that. We got creative. Uh, I'm happy to see an increasing number of virtual performances um, such as this. Suddenly the restrictions that we faced as live performers and entertainers and artists started to feel a little bit less like restrictions and more like um, opportunities. You know, suddenly you, you could book two gigs in the same night, suddenly the limit does not exist. And that notion leaves me feeling energized and optimistic. I'm thankful to be in such good company and I'm thankful for the Vermont Arts Council for having me. Hello, uh, my name is Rajni Eddins. It's a, definitely a blessing to be present here with you all. Um, my medium is spoken word and um, performance poetry. I use it as a tool to empower, inspire, and encourage creative expression and healing and positive affirmation of mutual humanity 
to confront white supremacy and other isms that disconnect us from that recognition of our shared value. So this is an honor to be here with all of you. Um, I released my first text in a number of years called Their Names Are Mine about two years ago. And now I've been actively sharing it in this moment. It seems to have taken on much more of a critical importance in terms of touching people, uh, holding space for vital conversations and um, holding space for courageous vulnerability. And I feel grateful for this opportunity to draw strength and uh, reverence and inspiration and mustering that depth of the human spirit from our ancestors. It seems to speak uh, especially poignantly now. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here with you all and thank you for all of your vital contributions to the culture and to this moment. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I was surprised to see just my video. Um, somebody, uh, and, Samara's slides. Okay, that cued me good. <laughs> All right. All right, hi. My name is Samira Evans and I am a vocalist um, and I sing an array of, of genres but my forte is jazz. I'm also a perform. I mean, I'm also a teacher. I am on faculty at Williams College in the jazz department, and I also teach in my home studio. So, in order to answer the question about how does this moment of time impact my work, I have to go back to the history because it's the history that actually impacts the moment that I live in right now. So um, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of my mentors. Um, when, what's been one of the most important components in my journey as an artist is mentorship. So I'd like to introduce you to a few of them. And the first is the late Willie Metcalf, who you see in the photo with me there. Uh, he was known as a bebop pianist, but in addition to his extraordinary musicianship, he was respected as how he, for how he used his craft to give back to the community. Willie was from Detroit, but we met in New Orleans where he founded the Academy of Black Arts where jazz music was the primary focus. Went Marcellus, among several other notable artists, attended the Academy. Willie taught me all of the fundamentals of learning and presenting music and supported my development by featuring me during many of his concerts and festivals. So the next slide will show a performance at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival many, many moons ago. <laughs> so Willie also taught music performance to kids in underserved inner city neighborhoods, specifically the projects and would often feature these students in the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Willie taught me to conduct the students while he played. And so, yeah, so there are some of the students that we worked with and we were taking a bow after, after one of our numbers. Willie inspired me to create opportunities to pay the music forward throughout my career. So the next photo, you'll see a program that I started in Vermont called Sam Sunday Set and Shed a musical mentoring program featuring mentors and their protégés in performance together, followed by a jam session where aspiring and seasoned musicians would get to shed together in front of a supportive audience. People of all ages were invited. So now I'd like to introduce you to another one of my mentors who I found when I moved to Vermont. And her name is Sheila Jordan. She's a National Endowment of the Arts recipient, which is the highest honor bestowed upon a jazz artist. 
And so you see all of these photos where I've had opportunities to actually um, really get involved in her life with music. Uh, as a coincidence, as coincidence would have it, she is also from Detroit and used to perform with Willie. I met her in Vermont during a musical I had the fortune to perform with her in, which you'll see the Beatnik Cafe up there in the left-hand corner. Um, she encouraged me to teach and is the reason I now have opportunities to mentor many vocal students at Williams College. Uh, so those are my students at Williams. I think that was one of the first years that I taught. I've been teaching there since 2014. So you see, I'm really excited <laughs> with my students. Um, teaching and mentoring undoubtedly reinforces my craft as vocalist, which is the greatest gift of giving and receiving. And during this moment of time right now, um, I can't imagine a, a better service that I can give to young people who are dealing with what's going on in our world today. And that is to really bring forth their creativity and be able to share it in a way that impacts other people. So that's my story. And just to say a few words about Toussaint Saint Negritude, he could not join us, but here is a video of his work. How I Built My Star House. It started with making poems seeing the alchemic results of pairing transcendence with the trodden floor, taking the seeds of some way forward and adding palpable visions from a river of things yet to be seen, building modes of liberation from roads of inner born means. Then it began to flourish through the making of hats, through the creation of crowns, anointing each vision I grasped, turning poems into high feathered hats. And with colors of courage and destinies blessed, with the galactic clarity of an incandescent breath, whole poems began to sound from the far outer reaches of a blown bass clarinet. Soon, entire cosmographies of freedom began to speak into being, reap into healing, reach into seeing, freeing into believing, feeling into gleaning my way home. It started with making poems, turning mountains into navigational tones, finding maroonage, upon these high ridge bones of futures crowning to be shown. It started with making vessels from dreams forest grown. It started with making the asterism of a drinking gourd into the castle of my very own home. And thus is born the star house. It started with making poems. <laughs> nice. Hello. My name is Leaf. Um, I use the them pronouns. And I make art about memories and about food and also about chosen family. Um, I grew up here in Brattleboro, Vermont, and I just recently graduated from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago um, this past spring. So in terms of how this moment has been affecting me, I do feel like I was sort of just released into the world, into this pandemic world, and um, yeah, I've really been using this time to try and reconnect with my breath and also um, turn, I've turned to my sketchbook practice, drawing and writing and collecting. 
and um, also going on walks in the woods and reconnecting with nature has been super essential in my experience this winter and um, just getting so much inspiration from um, the natural world and um, using, I just find like trees to be so inspirational personally because of the time and um, yeah, becoming reacquainted with um, nature in that way um, feels like reconnecting with an old friend and that feels really good. And I've just been trying to find joy in the small moments and sort of really slow down my life and um, just really find what feels good. And to me, my art is, um, I use my art to sort of process these really complicated emotions. And so um, it is very personal to me. And I also um, hope that other people will be able to relate to it also. So yeah. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm really excited to be included in this list of amazing artists. Ryan, you're muted. Okay, now, can you hear me now? Yeah. My name is Brian Blanchett, and I'm an Abenaki singer-songwriter, but I like to consider myself an Abenaki cultural revivalist. Um, I took these photos while hiking around the granite quarries in Graniteville this past fall. And the photos are from an area where the quarries currently aren't active, and I think it's inspiring to see the forest reclaim in Dakina. And I say this because among indigenous people, you hear the expression, you need to decolonize yourself. And I think that's exactly what the forest is doing. 25 years ago, I started singing on the powwow circuit, being mentored by someone who wanted to write new Abenaki songs. And, and a few years later, I was putting melodies to songs with lyrics in a parallel Algonquin dialect and performing them at gatherings and powwows. The first time we played a new language song to an indigenous audience, you could hear a pin drop uh, in, in the room when we were done singing. And my hair was literally standing up on the back of my neck. And I recognized then that there was far more to what I was doing uh, than I realized. And I see the pride in indigenous people, especially those of Abenaki descent, uh, when we're singing the songs or whether I'm singing the, the new contemporary songs. And the, the years to come brought many an affirmation like that. Um, at one point in time, we were watching uh, eagles doing a courtship dance. And every time we came to the top of the song, the eagles would come closer and closer to the point where the, the dancers were literally calling the eagles uh, to the circle. Uh, and we were pretty much all experiencing this as one. Um, but as a Berkeley College of Music alumni, I have been longing to do something far different than just traditional music. And, and I believe that by opening up the melodies um, to contemporary music and performing it that way, creates a platform to promote the Abenaki language in a and allow me to reach far more people. And um, this video that I'm featuring uh, is in this gallery is of, of my Abenaki version of Tom Rush's song, Merrimack County. Uh, oddly enough, I had to reach out to Tom today because someone wants to use it, uh, the music for it, a uh, screenwriter wants to use it uh, for a video that he's doing about the Connecticut River Valley. And I had to reach out to Tom and he literally replied, Kwai Brian. So he, he gave me back the Abenaki language that I was giving to him. And I think that's perhaps the proudest moment of the day, right? But there are far too many layers that is discussed and many spiritual connections along the way. And the project was many years in the making. I, I, I 
recorded a friend of mine uh, who named Gali Sanchez on congas, who played for Carlos Santana for over 30 years. And his opportunity to play now, in, in, you know, this was several years ago, but he recorded for the first time in his life as a proud Abenaki man. And Gali died in, in 2018. When I was trying to redo this project, I lost the original project file and I, I panicked. And then somehow I found Gali's merged tracks. We brought that into a studio in Waynesfield and uh, I had an engineer who's been working 30 years behind the glass to help me get the tempo settings correct. But the guys that played with me, Vermont has some of the best musicians in the country. I, I, I can't even explain it. Uh, just going to Berkeley, I, you, you, you would know something like that when, you, when you're playing with them. But we nailed it on the second track. So this project was many years in the making. And, and they say never to ask for strength because you will be put through more tests than you can handle. And you say, please, I can't handle it anymore. That's your new level of strength. And this project gave me strength, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Willie Winnie, thank you. And Caribou can't be with us physically tonight, but here's her video. Hello, my name is Caribou. I am originally from Kenya and have lived in Vermont for about 12 years. I am a singer and a songwriter, and my music is about healing and preserving my heritage, especially because I live far away from the culture that formed me for the better part of my life. I am so blessed because I now live in Winooski, and I live among a community of newly resettled refugees from Africa and other parts of the world. And part of my job is to help them overcome barriers that keep them from fully engaging as new Americans. And um, as an artist, and especially since I moved here, my songs have tended to reflect on their experiences. And um, I believe that writing their ex experiences in a song helps tell their stories, their experiences. And um, I understand that um, I have to use a language that they understand. So I recently wrote and shared songs about the COVID. And um, in these songs, I shared information that was accurate. And as you might know, there are tons of inaccurate information out there. And so the video uh, uh, is uh, called Chanjo, which in the, is the Swahili word to vaccine. Thanks. Lakini kuna watu kazi yao ni kuishi jamani Corona inatutosha Tunaweza kumaliza janga hili kwa chanjo wakati mwingine sisi huwa wavivu wazembe kutimiza yaliyo muhimu ingawaje tunajua ni kifo na kupona tunapaswa kujali maslahi ya watu hatimaye chanjo tufahidi sote utaguo ni wetu chagua maisha tuungane pamoja tumalize corona Hello, I'm William Fortune, uh, based in Brattleboro, and at the, I would like to take a moment to thank the ancestors, all of our ancestors, for giving us this moment, bringing us to this time in this now. Uh, thank you. I am a performer. Uh, I am represented in this process as as a poet, but my life began as a clown, musical theater person, and, and circus. I also am a podcaster, and currently I'm working with the Town Arts Fund in Brattleboro to do Hearts of Hope. And what I have gained in my life as a performer in my career is that what I do is all about healing, whether it's clowning, it's podcasting, it's poetry, or it's painting, it's all about healing. And that has been the thing that leads me through, through everything. And 
I am so grateful to have the opportunities to, to share, to create. Um, and that's when I start with thanking the ancestors. I am so grateful that my ancestors had pushed along, had left me the inheritance of creation. And I would love to share with you a poem right now. You are enough. You were born perfect. And then someone told you to try harder. You heard your shape was not the same as some others. Your skin is too fair, too dark, too freckled, too plain. You could be smarter. You make someone else feel dumb. Somewhere, we forgot to wash our hands of this and our hands soiled the rest of us until we began to swallow the filth without question. It is time to forget. It is time to remember mistakes are learning and process. You can be no one else but you. Your uniqueness is what makes you special. And there's nothing wrong with being special. The downs are there to emphasize how wonderful the ups are. And the in-between is neither up nor down. When I say you, I more often mean I. I was born perfect. I am enough. The healing process for me and all the art that I do starts with, and without me knowing it, it started with me loving me. And in showing the world how I love me, it allows the world to love itself and to love me. And I am so grateful for the Arts Council and the organizers of this to give me the, the platform and the ability to share that love with the world. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Nettie Lane and I am a performing artist, a clown, a clown midwife and um, a writer among other things. And um, I just wanna take a moment to offer my gratitude to Shanta and Desmond and Dominique who have been working so hard to um, put this exhibit together. And um, just wanna say, you know, in Vermont, we're really blessed to have so many amazing artists and I feel really fortunate to be in such wonderful company. Um, so two minutes isn't a lot to, um, I had to really think about what I wanna say. And um, uh, I guess what I wanna say is my come from, what my come from is, and I, I can trace it really back to an experience I had as a child when I was six years old. I was, uh, I went to Catholic school. We learned a new song. Um, interestingly enough, it was about nature. It didn't have, um, didn't say anything about God or um, any Catholic kind of things. It was just about nature. And I was running in the backyard, back and forth, back and forth, singing at the top of my lungs and crunching the leaves. And um, my mom saw me out the window and she, called out and asked what I was doing. And I answered playing with God. And I really felt I was playing with God. I, um, and at that moment, she, I think she just got a little scared. Um, and she tried to kind of um, tell me I wasn't having that experience. And uh, no fault to her or anything. But um, I'm telling you this story because I feel like my art and um, especially the clowning and my kind of come from has been finding my way back to playing with God and to sharing it and um, God or source or whatever name that you want to bring to it. Um, uh, I'll just add a, um, that everything is energy and as artists, everything we put out into the world has an energetic signature um, in clowning, uh, say that the clown doesn't exist without an audience and that we need that audience and that relationship um, for clowning to happen. And so if we work in the studio, it, um, I don't really consider it clowning until we put it out in the world, kind of put that energy out into the world. And so to answer the question, 
um, you know, during the pandemic, I basically have gone inward and um, I've, uh, I've changed my view of, of who the audience is. And um, I saw the pictures at the end here. Um, my audience has turned into the non-human world and that relationship between. And so that's kind of my current project. I, for lack of a better name right now, it's called The Present Project. And it's about being present and um, the present that the, the birds, the animals, uh, the natural world, I know Leaf mentioned it too, just um, expanding that idea of what an audience is. So I'll end with there. So thank you. Hi, I'm Ricky Moss, and I am so happy to be here with you. So this slide is a detail from a installation work that I used to do, and I'm not in my studio at the present. Instead, I've been writing novels, um, and I hope that the spirit of this piece permeates the work that I'm doing now. We'll see. So I've been working on a second novel, and when Last February before COVID hit, it was in fragments all over the place. It's a really messy first draft. And I had it in my head that last February, I would get to the work of putting this all together and creating a second draft that made some sense. But then the virus hit, shut us in, and something happened with time. I think it seemed for me to freeze or to gel to concentrate and I just could not focus on this piece. Instead, I became mesmerized with the world, watching it spin out of control. I got obsessed with the internet, lost my grip on what this novel was supposed to be and who was supposed to be writing it. The voice that I heard from it sounded dull, sounded convoluted and it sounded like really not me. By winter, if someone had seriously told me that the world was a projection made by an alien race, I would have agreed and clapped at that point. So all along though, I was teaching and I was teaching a workshop for the Burlington Writers Workshop. We're doing it on Zoom. And in my workshop, we pull apart a short story from the New Yorker or from uh, Paris Review or other literary magazines and then we have a core group and we write from prompts, we turn off our video and we go away and then we come back in 20 minutes. But instead of me writing from prompts, I would usually go into the kitchen and get into Twitter or click onto Facebook and just pretend that I was working. I just didn't do prompts. But then one day I did. And what happened was amazing to me. I really liked it. I did something small. I did something fast, the voice was free. It sounded more like me, it had a cadence. It was kind of confident, the sentences joined together. And there was a thrill of working down the bones of sentences without losing the lust and juice that you could generate in 400 pages to do something in 500 words and 200 words get the essence and the spirit of something. I was just learning that. And now my job is to bring this voice back into my novel. And so there's that, there's this gift of COVID to share. And um, I'm just so grateful to be here. Thank you, everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Stevens and today I'm here as a visual artist. My medium is using watercolor pencils and as shown in this picture, I also use ink. And I am so honored and so grateful to be nominated and to be here. So thank you for having me and thank you everyone for coming. Um, this time, this period in COVID has been really interesting because in some ways it has been 
very unfortunate. In a lot of ways, it has been very unfortunate. But in other ways, for me at least, I've been very grateful for this experience because I am the type of person that doesn't stop moving and doesn't stop going with things and with activities outside of school and everything. And pre-COVID, I didn't have the time that I wanted to have, or I didn't put in the time that I wanted to, um, to work on my artwork. And so this time in the pandemic has really helped slow down and to just embrace what we have now as this period of being isolated, being in our own little worlds. And it has really helped me to be more free and more creative with what it is that I draw. And as you can see in the back here, I filled my wall with my artwork. And it's been a really great way for me to deal with all of the things, all of the chaos that has been happening in our world and to help me de-stress, to help me just be in a more creative mindset. And so that's something that I'm really grateful for. And especially for this experience and this opportunity, I'm really grateful that I get to share my artwork. I get to see other people's artwork, which is amazing. It's so nice. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me and my art. So hope you enjoy. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Mika Haley. I'm a new Vermonter. And I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. Uh, I'm originally come from Madagascar. Um, so I play guitar and I play valiha. It's a national instrument in Madagascar. And so today I based I based in a, a Burlington. So. Please forgive me. Uh, I would like to uh, explain a little bit how uh, I get to into the the music world and the culture. So uh, I learn music just by here. Um if I remember um start I start like eight years old or nine, something like that. And I learned the music um by life and by ear. So because the music is a um part of a culture in Madagascar. So I learned a lot about that. And um, so today, um, I remember maybe uh, before I left Madagascar, uh, I worked uh, at a little studio, a recording studio in, Ma in the capital of Madagascar. So I work a lot with uh, a traditional musician Malagasy. So I moved in the uh, United States uh, in 2017 and then I moved uh, in Burlington like 2000, uh, end of the 2018. 
so yeah so this day so i have a new audience so uh i would like to share malagasy culture and music how malagasy music and so i i play world music so and today i'm glad to be here and thank Thank you for Vermont Art Council uh, to be a part of this session. So uh, now I would like to share with you this instrument, it's called Valia. So I'm gonna play a little bit about this instrument and like that you have an idea how it sounds like. Thank you. Okay, I need an unmuting for that one. Unmute, let's, a round of applause. Oh. Woo! Woo! A round of applause. That's, Thank that's, you. Even though we're not Thank done you. with the program, but that, I want, this is a round of applause for everybody. And thank you so much, Amiga Thank, you. thank you, thank you everybody. Thank and um, I know, I still wanna allow some time for some questions and answers. We'll probably run a little bit after eight if people are okay with that. Um, so I'd like to shift this into the Q&A and how this is going to work is please feel free to use the chat um, for Q&A and between Desmond and myself, um, you get to unmute yourself if you wanna ask a question and the artist also get to ask each other questions. I'm also going to put in the link to the gallery so that you can see more of the wonderful artists and the others that are featured on the gallery. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. So with that, I'd like to, anyone has any questions they would like to ask? I was in the middle of typing. Do I have to type it or? No, 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 you can ask, just ask it. Go ahead, go right ahead and ask it. I, I'd like to ask Veronica if she'd be interested in doing an album cover for me. Oh. Yes, I would be very interested. Um, may I ask, who are you? <laughs> I think that's Brian. This is Brian Blanchett. So I'm looking for a uh, somewhat to do with the talk that I just had um, and also, uh, the expression won long won z in the Abenaki language means live continue to live continually well. And it's not something we experience in uh, today's society, but I'd like to be able to promote that and, and along with the decolonization type of theme. Okay. Um, so I will yeah, I can ahead. put my email in the chat and we can um, talk about it and talk about all the ideas. So yeah, that would be great. And I can send you both an email too to like link you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way it's not in the chat. I'll do that. I'll yeah. link you both. I have a note right here. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks I love much. when stuff like that happens. Thank you. Anyone else? I think doesn't just yeah, said. I'm familiar with that meme, the, the medium. So I was like, uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what I want. Yeah. Thank you, Desmond. I think Desmond put a note to remind everyone we could use the raise the hand function, and you can also feel free to ch put something in the chat. Are there any questions? Uh, hello. Yes. 
Oh, this is so exciting and wonderful. I, I have to thank you. I'm a, I'm a painter in Vermont and I haven't met a lot of these people. So I just want to join. How do you join or what? How do you do this? Oh, the, so the way we, that's a good question. So the way we did this is um, we sent out an ask to a number of artists, like a whole range and a list. And we asked them for nominations. They could self-nominate and they could nominate others. Uh, and I'm sure we're doing this first round, but I'm sure we're going to be talking about other ways of engaging with artists as well. And definitely sign up for the newsletter because I think that's another way. And if you have more questions, definitely I'll put my email in the chat. And there's also Desmond and Dominique you can ask too. So if you have any questions of us, you can feel for, more than free to contact us. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? And there's a link, people were asking about the newsletter. There's a link that I posted, I'll repost it again for both the newsletter and the gallery. And someone asked, would love for everyone to let me know what they are reading. So is there anything that anyone's reading right now? Like any books on your nightstand? I get, Kenny, it, and if I'm pronouncing your way, is, is that what you meant? You can unmute yourself if you wanna ask it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a visual artist and a writer and what I read has an enormous amount of influence on what I do in general. And I just wondered if anybody's got some really groovy stuff that they would like to recommend. I'm always looking for what um, makes people excited. Yeah, so anybody either reading or is there anything that's like getting anybody like energized and inspired and jazzed? Someone Nettie made, Nettie, Nettie, Nettie said braiding sweet grass is continually on my nightstand. Yes. Uh, just read Sin for me, said Sarah. I love this. Yeah, feel free to put it in the chat too. Like what are you reading or... This is William, and my last read was The Art of Dreaming by Carlos Castaneda. Mm. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Ellen, and this is what a gift, a book that was gifted me, which is great because I did a lot of um, protesting and whatnot this summer. And because there's a lot of miscommunication in the world, I've been reading about um, ways to communicate in different ways that we um, may not understand one another. And so I've been reading this book, Five Languages of Love, which has been really interesting to see um, how different people express love. And we may not recognize when someone's expressing it to us because we don't speak their language. So yeah, those are my what reads. Ellen, did you say languages of love or love languages? No. What was the name of the book? Five love languages. Okay, thank you. I don't know how to do the chat type thing. No, 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 I can do it. And tell me the name again and I'll type it. Okay, it's five languages of love, the secret to love that lasts, that one. And then it's pleasure activism. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else you want to shout out? It, but let's um let's uh, leave room for. Is there another question? Does anybody have any more questions or comments that they would like to share with the artist? Oh, someone at Annie asked Samara, when are you performing streaming next? I miss seeing hearing you live, girl. Can't wait till we can all hear you in person again. So that's from Annie. Samara, any update on when we can hear, see you? Live? <laughs> <laughs> it's awfully nice of you, Annie, for me to give me this opportunity to share what I'm going to perform next, which happens to be uh, next Friday. I'll be at Hawks and Reed, and it is going to be a live stream, and I am going to be putting it on Facebook so people can check it out. And um, I'll be performing with Franz Robert, who's an amazing pianist. And it's just the two of us, and we're going to, it's, it's to celebrate Black History Month. So I'm only going to be performing songs that were composed by Black 
composers or songs that were made popular by Black artists, but primarily Black composers. So I'm really excited about that. So that'll be, again, Friday the 26th at, uh, I think, 7 o'clock at Hawks and Reed. I'll be, I'll be putting it out on Facebook, so check it out. Thank you, Samara. And Samara, I know that there are a couple of other people I wanted to invite too. And William, can you, William, can you put the information up for your event? And Samara, I know you have a newsletter where you keep people posted. So if you want to put the link up for how people can sign up for that, that would be great. And somebody else asked about where can we hear, see, hear Mika Haley perform. So Mika Haley, you want to tell if there's a way for people to find out when you're performing. How do you book it? Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. That's OK. Uh, yeah, yeah. So for now, uh, you can go check uh, Mika Haley uh, Facebook page. Yes. And uh, I have like um, some of my performance before or, or coming up. So and and you can listen Michaela's song on a reverberation too and then i just uh, released uh one single uh song um uh end of uh last year and you can check it on uh, all the platform uh, like spotify or Pandora, on Amazon Music, and I hope soon I'm gonna uh, release uh, one single song too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I just actually shared your Facebook information, and uh, were there any burning questions that anyone had uh, for our Thank you so much, William, for sharing that information. And thank you, Samara. Were there any burning questions that you have for all these lovely people? And might I add two, and I'll, I'll, I'll repost this again. Please go check out the online gallery because the online gallery has a lot and you'll be able to go dip into everybody's info, read more all about them. And I know this two minutes each was really hard. Um, but also we're gonna be having more conversations as well. So more in March, more in April. Were there any more uh, questions that anyone had or did any of the artists have any questions, burning questions for each other as we begin to wrap up? I, I don't have a question. I just wanna also express my gratitude. I thought everybody was really wonderful and also my gratitude for all the folks that work behind the scenes to you know, make this such a great opportunity for each and every one of us tonight. So thank you so much for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to nominate some folks too, because now one of the, the persons I nominate is gonna be doing an album. And that's just fantastic. <laughs> I want I, um, I to just cover. comment. Yeah. Um, I'm, my name is Emily and I'm actually a lifetime friend of Samira's. Uh, we go way back to New Orleans days, um, but I just saw her post this literally four minutes before you started, and I just felt like I was meant to be here. I'm a performing artist, I'm a poetess, um, and, uh, I, and a visual artist, and I'm just incredibly inspired, um, you know, all the way from your end of the world to mine. Um, and I just want to thank everyone who shared your art today, and it's really inspired me to um, take some more steps forward. So I just want to say thank you so much. And and Emily, so glad to hear have you here, and you know Willie Metcalf, so you knew who I was yes, talking about. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes, we go way back, and it was beautiful presentation, Samir, and everyone. I'm just super inspired. So thank you for sharing and having the courage to share your hearts um, and your art. We're both from New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's so awesome. All right, so it's it's eight. We're there. I before we, and I want to. I also personally want to thank everybody for being so patient with me with all the emails and the communications. So thank you so much for that, and a big huge thanks to Desmond 
and Dominique and Michelle and everyone and our ASL interpreters, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the captioning. Um, this has been amazing. And also a shout out to Kara for, a shout out to everybody. Shout out to Kara for the very first event and conception of this because that was amazing. She was, um, she's no longer with the Vermont Arts Council, but in the first round that we did this, really, really, really instrumental. So thank you for I am has like, has been around like to riff off what Samara said earlier. Oh, Kara's here. Kara, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so shouting you out and singing your praises. Um, such an honor to work with you before. And thank you for what you've done with this. And thank the whole Vermont Arts Council for what you continue to do for Vermont artists and thank all the artists because all of you and there are many 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 others obviously uh, not encompassed but that we we see you so thank you thank you so much it looks like there's a hand up perfect where's the hand oh Aaron your question you're muted hi everyone yes I really just want to thank you all for providing such stellar access. I really appreciate it where I'm able to participate and I'm able to share space with you all. So I really just wanted to say thank you for a lovely evening and thank you so much. I look forward to seeing this going forward and a big thank you to the Vermont Art Council. Thank you so much, much love. Thank you so much, Erin. Thank you, I appreciate it, thank you. Yes, thank you, with so much love. Okay, I have to jump in. This is Ellen and Erin um, did my piece for me. This is my first time like seeing her. Oh. And I love you and you're beautiful. And oh. you're inspiring. And I wish I could hold you oh. and celebrate you and what you're bringing into the world. Um, yeah, I, all of you artists are have been amazing and inspiring. And thank you all. And and Vermont Arts Council putting up with my my emails and always reaching out and and with purpose and focus and empowerment. So I, I thank you for all of that. That was gonna make me tear up. Like that was like just one of those moments of whoa. So wow, thank you, thank you. And as we wrap, Dominique Desmond, is there anything that you want to say uh, again? Um. I'm encouraging Natalie. Thank you for your information. I just copied it and we'll definitely be reaching back out. Is there anything you want to say, Dominique Desmond, or anyone from the Vermont Arts Council? It's been a real privilege to be a part of helping amplify um, all of the efforts of the amazing creativity in Vermont. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that everyone has been um, so responsive responsive to participating and for everyone to attending tonight. Yes, thank you. And Desmond, is there anything you want to say? Again, Des Desmond was, uh, is the rock star to, as well, who put together the gallery, like a huge thanks for that monumental task and huge thanks to Dominique for the PowerPoint and all, all, all the hands, just a thank you to all the hands. I'm very grateful to all the hands in this. This was amazing. Brian, thank you. So Desmond, anything you wanna say as we close out? Um, I'll just uh, reiterate uh, the gratitude and love. I'm loving to feel that and, and return it. Um, and I am, and as the person who's running the I Am A Vermont Artist interview series right now, I just like to say what an absolute pleasure and honor it is to be able to get to know each of you personally and, and write about you. So uh, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you again. And if you're an artist out there and you'd like to be a part of that series, please like get in contact with me or Desmond or like just, just whoever you can connect with and we'll link you up. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a really good evening and I hope you have a beautiful weekend. And uh, we hope to see you on that gallery and See you at our next event.
March 18th. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Shanta, for all the work. And Desmond, thank, thank, you, so thank you Thank you, Dominique. Oh, thank you, Vermont. Thank you, everyone. Hi, William. I just wanted to say hello to William. <laughs> you might not remember me, but I remember you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank it's been you. very inspiring, good to say. Proud to be a Vermont artist of whatever type. <laughs> All right. I couldn't figure out who was talking. <laughs> well, it's me. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll figure out how to hook up and we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank, thank you all you beautiful artists. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Beautiful work. Beautiful work with Ellen's poem. Just beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My heart is full. <laughs> so full. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much, Betty. Thank you, all the ASL interpreters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Immensely. Hugely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Actually. This is Aaron. They're both phenomenal interpreters. They were phenomenal tonight. So a big, big thank you and a celebratory thanks to both of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So.